Welcome to this talk. The subject we're going to look at this morning is uh, respiratory infections, infections involving the respiratory tract. Now we're going to start off by talking about infections of the upper respiratory tract, but most of the time we're going to focus on infection in the lung tissue itself with a condition called pneumonia. But to set the background, let's think about respiratory infections in general, thinking about upper respiratory tract infections to begin with. So perhaps the one that you've all had, come, well, of course you've all had, come across it all the time, is the common cold, a respiratory tract infection. And this is a viral condition, therefore we cannot treat it. We cannot cure the common cold. We have no effective antiviral drugs against the rhinoviruses. Rhino means to do with the nose, virus, virus clearly. So the common cold, what causes it? Several different viruses, several different types of rhinovirus. Now because there's several different types of virus, what this means is you can get a cold one week and okay you'll recover from it because you'll make antibodies to it. You make antibodies to the virus and that the antibodies kill the virus, get rid of it, and get, gets rid of the virus and you get better. But then because the, in theory then you can catch another virus you see which is different which you may not be immune to. That's why some people unfortunately can get one or two colds uh, in a winter. So several different viruses can cause it. And not only are there several different viruses but the genetic nature of these viruses change. And if the genetic nature of the virus changes it means the proteinaceous outside coating of the virus can also change. And that means that a virus which your immune system recognised and dealt with last year can, in principle, in theory, reinfect you the year after because there's been sufficient genetic change in the virus for the immune system no longer to be fully effective against it. And there's two ways genetic change can occur in cold viruses, in fact in any virus really. These are called genetic shift and genetic drift. Now what do these terms mean? Well, in a genetic shift, there's a radical change in the genetic material, resulting in a radical change in the nature of the virus. This is what is often called a mutation. The virus will mutate into a completely different form. And that form, people will have no immunity to. There'll be no herd immunity to that particular type of virus. And this, the same can happen with influenza viruses as well, with the flu virus. You can get sudden genetic changes in that, uh, mutations in that, genetic shift effects. The other type we mentioned was genetic drift. What do we mean by genetic drift? Well, drift is the way that the virus just changes gradually and slowly, very, very minor mutations or minor, cha minor genetic changes in it. And uh, if there's a minor change, then the odds are you'll still be immune to it because we enjoy a reasonable amount of cross-immunity. Immunity is specific, but it's not absolutely specific. So if it's changed a little bit, then, then perhaps you'll still be immune to it. But if it changes a lot, you won't be, and you can get the same virus again. Now, talking about influenza viruses, in 1919, an influenza virus mutated, and it caused an absolute pandemic the figures of how many people died uh, are debated, but it's probably around 20 million. Certainly more than were killed in the First World War, were killed in the influenza pandemic. Pandemic is, is an infection which affects the whole world that occurred in 1919, and about 20 million people died from that. Many of whom were young, fit adults who developed it. Complications developed, set in, such as pneumonia. Of course, in those days, antibiotics weren't available and about 20 million people died from flu, from an influenza virus, because it radically changed its nature, and people had no immunity to it. So many different viruses can cause colds and influenza, and even those viruses, there can be genetic shift and drift of those viruses. And uh, you may have come across flu vaccinations. In flu vaccines, what people do <coughs> is the, they actually mix up three uh, they, mix up, they make a vaccine against three uh, of the influenza viruses that are around. But of course there's many more than three influenza viruses around. So what they do is, basically, it's, a very good, it's an educated guess, but it's a, very, it's, a, it's a guess nevertheless. They guess what 
flu virus is going to be causing influenza next winter and they immunize people against those three common viruses and usually they get it pretty well right. But it is still a guess because you don't know which of the dozen or so or, or more, I'm, I'm not sure, there's, there's several viruses around, which ones are going to be causing the outbreaks next winter. So viruses, di different types, genetic shift and drift of those viruses can have infection with the possibility of, of reinfection unfortunately. So several different viruses, genetic shift and drift changing the nature of those viruses. Now thinking about the rhinoviruses, they actually damage the epithelial cells of the nasal cavity and this causes inflammation. So the viruses directly insult the epithelial cells in the nose causing inflammation. And it's this inflammation that causes the features that we call a cold characteristic watery discharge, for example. Nasal irritation due to the inflammation. And possible bacterial secondary infection. And as we'll see, a common problem in the respiratory system is that bacterial infection can superimpose itself on viral infection. But the viral condition itself you would normally abate within a few days as we develop cellular immunity to the virus. But the key thing is may lead to secondary bacterial infections, typically uh, streptococcal infections. But staphylococcal and even pneumococcal uh, infections are possible. Pneumococcal of course the bacteria which most commonly causes pneumonia. So where does this leave uh, treatment and advising people who have colds and things like that? Well there's no point taking antibiotics for a cold because it's a virus. But in some people who may be a particular risk of developing secondary bacterial infection, for example those with uh, chronic bronchitis, then possibly it's worth giving them antibiotic cover when they've got a cold because it's very likely that secondary bacterial infection could occur resulting in an exacerbation of chronic bronchitis, an acute exacerbation of chronic bronchitis. Also these people it's worth immunizing against influenza uh, type uh, viruses as well if that vaccine is available. Because I'm sure we've all experienced this, you get a cold, but then you start getting sinusitis and then you start bringing up some green sputum. And the green sputum is characteristic of bacterial infection. So what you need to do is assess the risk of secondary bacterial infection to the individual and treat or not treat uh, according to your assessment of that risk. So secondary bacterial infection, common after viral infection. Now I've put various things here, uh, tonsillitis for example is inflammation of the tonsils <coughs> due to infection usually, pharyngitis, inflammation of the pharynx, laryngitis affecting the larynx and the vocal cords, tracheitis affecting the trachea, and if you remember your anatomy there's a connection from the pharynx to the inner ear, so these infections can lead to inflammation, infection of the middle ear, otitis media. And I've grouped all these together because remember the respiratory tract is a continuous surface without boundaries. So in principle an infection which exists in your, um, in your tonsils can go into your trachea or it can go for a sore throat can develop into a, a tracheitis or a, a cold can develop into a, a laryngitis because the bacteria is free to move around the tract. And if the infection is bad enough, uh, pus may be present as well. Inflammation will usually be present from a virus or a bacteria, but pus and thick mucus uh, secretions, typical, uh, can develop with bacterial infections. Certainly the mucus, the pus is, is a more serious sign. And uh, classically, with bacterial infection you get green or yellow uh, sputum. 